Good morning. Hope you guys are doing well today. Um, wanted to get into uh, some fundamentals of, of acrylic. And uh, for those of you guys actually that were in my gel class yesterday, I really appreciate. And for those of you who weren't, um, you're going to love what, what I'm going to be covering. All right, so let's get right into this. All right, so... What we're going to end up doing is just going through the same process um, and again, firm believer of, you know, understanding that in order for you to get the least amount of problems with any type of enhancement, your, your prep, your application and your finishing have to be on point. So we're going to start by pushing back cuticles and then we're going to use our e-file to gently remove shine from the surface of the nail. So, you know, I'm using this part of the barrel, which is zone one, just to lightly tickle away the shine. And then I start moving from corner to corner, right? You can see I'm moving from here to here. Lightly start feathering it away. And then basically all we wanna be able to do is get the shine off um, by feathering it off the nail. We're not going to be using an aggressive motion or aggressive pressure. And then we're gonna be using swipe to come in. Um, and then, I, I, you know, again, you can use a manicure brush, but, you know, lint-free wipe is great for you to get most of the oils and contaminants off the nail. This is gonna dehydrate the surface, create um, a, you know, a well-balanced pH level so that you, know, you can see it turning chalky white, but this is what you're gonna set yourself up for protein bond application. So I'm gonna come through, we're gonna apply a nice coat of protein bond, then I'm gonna come back. Again, you're gonna go through all 10 nails, and then what we're gonna end up doing is doing the same exact thing. I'm gonna work with speed bubble gum. We're gonna focus on sculpting. Um, that way you guys have a really good understanding on how to be able to do this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a little bit of a larger form today. Let's go with the extended forms. And, uh, you know, again, if you place this in the middle, then it gives you a little bit of stability through the center, which you can press right here. And then what you can do is you can open this up. So pressing it in the middle is gonna give you an opportunity to keep it within that range. Um, that way you're going to be able to fit the form on, right? So whatever style you choose, if I decided that I wanted to go square, I could just keep it in this fashion. If I wanted to pinch it, I would be able to do that as well. Um, give yourself an opportunity when you're sculpting longer nails to um, establish the length with the free edge that you're going to be building. So if we're gonna be building a longer nail, what I wanna be able to do, right? Maybe working with speed bubble gum. So let me just go ahead and pull some of that out. What we wanna be able to do is submerse our brush and I'm going to bounce inside the powder, right? So that I'm going to be able to get a really nice bead on one side of my brush. <clears throat> I don't want to drag through, right? It's gonna, it's gonna give me really those dry ends and I don't want to sit there and swirl in the middle as well. Again, that's going to give you dry, kind of crusty edges, a consistency that you don't want to work with. What you want to be able to do is if you submerse your brush, let me just put a little bit more nail liquid inside here. All right, so if you hold your bottle up to the ferrule, you're going to be able to dispense your liquid inside your dish without it spilling all over the place. All right, so what we want to be able to do is you want to be able to pick up a large enough bead by submersing and bouncing in the powder. I like to turn my brush upside down immediately. Now, if I'm going to be sculpting a tip, I'll go ahead and drain it. That way, when I go ahead and set this down, I don't you know, have to worry about it running. So I'm immediately going to walk it right up to the edge you know, tuck it up to the nail. And then with the excess, what I can do is I can literally, I can stretch it by pulling down towards the front. And I'm not trying to create something 
super massive, but you know, again, with the length of these forms, I'll be able to create a free edge that's nice and flush to the natural nail, right? That way I'm gonna be able to build onto the body, right? So we're gonna try to get this thing all the way out to the very end as sharp as we possibly can. And this is going to establish a really, really good tip, right? And again, I'm trying to keep it as even, right? As even from the end of the growth channel all the way out to the very, very front. We can try to make this as pointed as we possibly can to try to create that really, really sharp stiletto look. Okay, so as you can see from the side profile, right? I've built out this extension. I've, I've kept it absolutely tight uh, from the end from the end out. Now, for those of you guys that are wondering how much should you focus, how like where's your upper arch going to start or where are you going to put this into play? You know, for me, when I'm working with a nail like this, I got a little bit of glitter right there. I'm just gonna get that out. Um, I'm not concerned about, I'm not really concerned about trying to create this massive upper arch in the back, but I feel it's gonna be like, because of the length of the nail, it's going to be pretty much about right here, right? I'm not gonna have it way back here, but it's gonna be a little bit farther out towards this area, right? So what we need to focus on is getting a large enough pearl and then having it self-level, right? So that we have tight cuticle areas and we can have it run down towards the front of the nail. So again, I need to submerge my brush and you get a lot of liquid because we're gonna get a big pearl. And then what I'm gonna do again is I'm gonna bounce, bounce, bounce. And I'm going to count one, two, three, and around the four count, I'm going to release. I'm going to use the tip of the brush to quickly walk around the perimeter while everything is self-leveling. And as soon as it gets past the stress area, I'm really holding everything in place, trying to get it to level down towards, right, the extension that I built out. You can see how everything is kind of running down into this area. I'm using again the wedge of my brush to prevent it from running into the skin. But what we want to be able to create is we want it to level not just this way, we want it to level this way as well. That way you could create the least amount of ledges. You don't want ledges. You want to be able to file this into perfection uh, in the least amount of effort. So again, I'm allowing this to just kind of flow into place and then using the body of my brush just to kind of lightly press it back, right? To force some of the acrylic up into the area where it's going to give the product strength. And if you look from the side, you can see how everything is starting to build. Now, again, it's impossible to get something to cover the whole entire thing. So when I start, I need to start around here and work it down, right? And so what I can do, I could submerse my brush Again, getting a large enough bead. Um, and then I can kind of just set it down around here, brush it back, and then use like the self-leveling nature of the acrylic just to kind of walk down towards the tip. I'm letting it run, letting the product run down towards the tip of the nail, right? And again, the, the consistency that I have is going to make sure that I don't build any type of like bubbles inside the nail. I'm allowing the product to self level run into place, right? And then as it starts to fill, you can start to see as I'm using the body, the brush just to kind of push it back to force some of the acrylic into the shape that I want. As it comes down towards the tip, lightly start feathering it again constantly working over the top from side to side as it starts to set. And then the only thing I need to fill is really that, that part right there. This is, this is really how I'm going to be able to build so that I have the least amount of filing to do. I need a little bit more at that front end, which I'm going to get here. And then at this point too, if you choose to tap off excess and then set it down and then brush back so that it doesn't move, you can do that because you're applying it on top of acrylic, right? Boom. So, you know, using the tip of my brush, kind of filling in the space necessary, using the sides of my brush just to work it back and get it absolutely perfect. Um, that's what we're going to do. I'm going to depend on my hand file as well as my electric file to reduce the length 
uh, reduce uh, basically some of the bulk, uh, file it into shape. Now here with this, what I'm gonna do, after I'm done building something like this out, I need to look at the side and say, okay, yo, do I have enough through here? Right, so I probably need a hair more based on the length. So if I get a little bit more and I set this right here into the stress area, notice that I'm using the tip of the brush just to kind of push back. And then I'm gonna brush from the front, leaving a majority of that thickness right through that area. I don't wanna just set it down and start brushing. I need to set it down, tap to the back. It'll self level, have everything run down to the front and then start brushing, right? And this is really going to kind of fill the space. So you can see from the side how I've been able to add the bulk I need. You can see how it comes down and it starts tapering down towards the tip of the nail with great shape. And that's how you're going to be able to build it, right? You can see within, within, within form how everything is created around the edges, um, how I'm able to get it super tight around here, right? So you guys, and again, from this point to this point, it's all about allowing the product to self-level. You have to be able to do that. If you don't do that, you're always going to build a ledge, right? So at this point, what you would do is you continue to work. Um, and then usually when I'm done doing this nail, then I could take off the form and continue to, you know, manipulate it because it's going to take a little bit of time for this to set. Um, the free edge was built out. Now just to show you, I'm leaving my brush inside my dish. You can see I left my brush inside my dish. I left it there for a reason because I don't want any of the acrylic to get stuck inside the, um, inside the hair. So what you can do once you're done is you can use your, you know, your towel. I'm constantly rinsing it out. Someone asked me a couple days ago on a direct message what they should use. They run out of monomer. I don't recommend using straight acetone all the time, but if you have no choice and you have acrylic that's dried up inside, then you can soak it for a minimal amount of time and then gently try to work it off with a towel. Don't try to use an orange wood stick or a sharp blunt instrument to tear it out of the hair because then you're gonna end up ruining your brush. All right, so this is like starting to set. Let me just go ahead and take, you can see like how much flexibility, look at that, right? Um, I, I'm not really concerned about tearing this off. Let's go ahead and just use that. But you can see, look, look, like you can see as this starts to dry, the lower part of the nail is, is really, really set, right? So for those of you guys that have a magic, for those of you guys who have a magic wand, especially when you're doing larger sets, before you actually do the overlay. If you're really concerned about getting a tight C curve, especially with length, my recommendation would be to build the tip. And if you built it out like a full well tip where it actually covered, pinch the base first before you do the overlay. If you pinch the base first before you do the overlay, then like, because underneath this is all like, this is dry, right? That thin extension I built out is completely dry where it's not dry is through the body. So, you know, again, as I'm coming through and I'm trying to manipulate some of this structure, I'm trying to do that without trying to put like big indentations in the sides of the nail, right? But I can still kind of manipulate the, the sides as we're going through and this should be dry uh, quite fast, right? So you can see once it's done, what we're gonna end up doing is really focusing on how we're going to shape this right so that we have a really really straight structure and my, again the focus is if you were to line up a line down the center from the center of the cuticle to center of here right you're going to notice there's a little bit more bulk on this side than there is on that side which again is not a big deal we'll go ahead and file that into shape to show you my recommendation again take a you know, if you have a brand new hand file, make sure you take the edges down so that you do not cut your client, right? I've done that many times um, and it's not, it's not pleasant. All right, so let's get in here and, and shape this. 
contact through the whole entire side, right? And that's what we want to be able to do. And you're going to see, like, I'm going to have a really, really kind of a straight shelf from the edge all the way down to this point. Got more room on this side, right? So I'm keeping contact with the whole entire side as I'm filing up all the way through. But as you can see, it's the same thing. I have a real straight shelf that I'm filing all the way through to the very, very end. That means I've kept contact with the whole entire side. I'm not trying to create a very rounded uh, tip. What I'm trying to do is, is create something that's very straight. Now, from underneath, what we wanna be able to do is we wanna be able to line this up at the lowest point and file up until our file reaches. Right, so this one's not gonna be hard because it's pretty straight. Right, I still have quite a bit of, of flexibility there. You can see I'm able to get that completely straight from that end all the way to the tip. This one's hanging down a little bit more. So you can see where I'm gonna have to start. I'm gonna have to start a little bit more at that tip and then I'm gonna have to work my file up parallel to the side of the finger. And as I continue to file, as I continue to file, I will eventually reach the end of the growth channel right there right, so that it's absolutely straight. And again, when you're doing longer nails, you have way more bulk to work with, right? So just, you know, again, it's, it's just a matter of just taking your time to make it, easy, to make it easier. Um, it is a lot more work doing longer nails, that is for sure. I just wanna make sure this is not gonna pop out so that when we're filing this into shape. What you're gonna end up having to do, you're gonna have to take your bit, and for those of you guys, again, uh, that work with an e-file, you're going to have to bring the bit a little bit farther out. That way that the tip of the nose, the tip of the handpiece doesn't hit. All right, so let's go ahead and bring this down. So what I'm looking at is side profile when I'm finishing. I'm going to go ahead and run my electric file around 10,000 RPMs. I don't need a lot of work through the upper arch. Where I'm going to need a lot of it is as I'm coming through, right, right through this area here. Right, just to get this tight all the way down and through. It's a long nail, so what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to really focus my attention on the C curve through here. I'm still going to need a little bit of refinement. That tip is not as tight as I want it to be. Looking down the barrel, the nail you can see as I'm coming through, getting everything nice and even in one direction. And then what we want to be able to do again is around the cuticle area, I'm one direction, one direction, one direction, and then following through the balance, you, you're gonna see how I'm able to get this into shape without that much filing. Okay, so finally, last but not least, this is where we're going to do all the final detail work. I'm gonna be able to come in, let's try to get that tip absolutely tight. I'm going to go around the cuticle area and then down through the body in one direction. You can see as I hand file, when I'm holding my hand file, I'm literally coming down here. All right. That's how I'm going to be able to work. You can see my file lines, how it's working that side. And on this side, I place my hand up, contact going up, let it fall, contact going up, let it fall. Right, for those of you guys who have long nails, I would wrap your finger, that way the hand file is not going to destroy, but at the end of the day, it is what it is. Okay, last but not least, what we're going to do is we're going to look at client profile because we wanna be able to get this as, as, as tight as we can. And, you know, looking down the barrel, okay, so it's like, what are we going to do? We need to make sure that side's even here on this side. I need to make sure this side is even. So from the client profile, I'm going to keep my finger here so that I'm not running it on their skin. But what we need to be able to do is look from this perspective, right? So that it's going to be absolutely perfect from side to side. All right. Once we're done pretty much shaping that out, you're going to see, I mean, I'm not gonna have to spend a lot more time. I'm just gonna lightly kind of buff the surface to get a lot of the scratches off. All right. You can see, let me go ahead and we'll just wipe this off, what we're left with. 
right? And, 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 and again, really, really long. But again, from all angles, I have, right, sidewalls all the way. I could probably just refine a little bit more at the tip. But this is gonna be a great, you can see how long extension. This is a beautiful color, it's a speed bubble gum. <clears throat> but you can see what we, what we did. Wanted to be able to show you how you're going to take your nails to an extended length, extended wear. Um, especially when, you know, you're not working with tips. So, hope this helps. If you guys have any questions, feel free to hit me up. Always here to help. Um, appreciate you guys tuning in for Nail School. Again, hit me up if you guys hit us up if you guys have any questions. I look forward to seeing you soon. Have a wonderful day. Peace.